everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're here for the first time hi my name is busa Rimoliayo and i am nigerian registered nurse and midwife i am also a united kingdom registered nurse in today's video i am going to be discussing nursing care plan we're going to go over the topic of the nursing care plan that we're going to be discussing we'll go over the objectives the nursing diagnosis the intervention scientific rationale and evaluation please note that this is basically an example to help you understand the nursing care plan So first, let's have a review on the topic that we'll be discussing in nursing care plan today. Today's nursing care plan is going to be on fractures. And just for context, a fracture is a break in the continuity of a bone. And it occurs where the stress that is placed on the bone is more or like it exceeds the biological loading capacity of that bone. And there are different types of it like open fracture, closed fracture, green stick fracture, and so many other types. So let's go over to our scenario. So we have here Mrs. Nwakwo, a 68-year-old female that was admitted to the hospital after falling in her home. She sustained an open stroke compound fracture of her right femur. She has a history of osteoporosis and hypertension and she lives alone. During the pain assessment, she reported a pain level of 8 over 10. So I already highlighted some things in this scenario just to give us a pointer. I highlighted the right femoral fracture showing that it would have an impact on her mobility then also the fact that she reported a pain level of 8 over 10 which means that she is in pain. These two parts I highlighted is already giving us a pointer to um, possible nursing diagnosis that we can work on for these patients. Now let's go over the nursing diagnosis. These are three nursing diagnoses that we'll be working on for Mrs. Mwanko. You can see that I highlighted some parts of the diagnosis. We have two actual diagnoses here and one risk diagnosis. You will see that the actual diagnosis all have three statements or both have three statements, green, brown, and red. While the um, risk diagnosis has two statements, the green and brown. The green statements are the problem. The brown statements are the etiology or possible cause of that problem, while the ones in red are the evidence. So first we have acute pain related to the injury evidenced by patient's verbalization. Obviously the patient has already said that they are in pain and rated the pain on a scale of 8 out of 10. Then we also have impaired physical mobility related to musculoskeletal pain and unfamiliarity with the use of immobilization devices evidenced by patients' inability to perform ADLS. Although the scenario did not give us enough information for me to draw up this diagnosis, don't forget this is just an example. So I'm assuming that after Mrs. Nwako has been admitted, obviously she had a fracture of her right femur and she will not be able to move around easily. And since she has never had fracture before because she... Um, there is no issue of fracture. She only had issue of osteoporosis and hypertension. It means that most of the immobilization devices and um, devices that will be given to her by the physiotherapist are things she will not be familiar with, the crutches, wheelchairs, or anything. So that may actually impair her ability to use them and perform her activities of daily living. And finally, we have risks in for infection related to an open fracture and laceration. Obviously, there has been a break in skin integrity because of the fracture. And if microorganisms get access to those areas, they may cause an infection, um, causing the wound to eat poorly or even going as far as um, patient coming down with sepsis. So these are three diagnoses that we'll be working on for this patient. Now that we understand the nursing diagnosis, how we came up with it, the objectives and how it should be written, let us go over the nursing intervention, the scientific rationale, and the evaluation of the care plan. The first diagnosis we'll be working on is acute pain related to injury evidenced by patient's verbalization. We have earlier established that she reported that she is in pain and recorded her pain on a scale of 8 out of 10. So our objective now is that within one to two hours of intervention, the patient's subjective perception of, perception of pain will decrease as indicated by lower pain intensity rating. In other words, within one to two hours of intervention, Ms. Nwanko will be able to tell us that her pain level has reduced. I'm using one to two hours because this is a fracture pain of the right femur and it, I'm just trying to be realistic. 
I cannot use 20 minutes here right now because it is a break in the bone and it's going to take a while for all these interventions that are in the care plan to get implemented. So I'm just being realistic. So let's head over to the rest of the care plan. So now we have the nursing interventions and scientific rationale for the fresh nursing diagnosis. So the first intervention is to assess the patient's pain using an appropriate pain intensity rating scale. And the reason we are doing that is to obtain baseline data so that we'll be able to effectively assess subsequent increase or decrease in pain. In other words, you're going to ask Mrs. Uwako, um, since we've established that the pain is on a level of 8 to 10, or a level of 8 out of 10 rather, you make sure that you write that down and so that when you ask her the next time you'll be able to judge if the pain is increasing or decreasing the next thing is using non-pharmacological pain management methods like diversion therapy cold therapy music therapy um, to just take away a focus from the pain and rationale is that non-pharmacological methods like that can augment pharmacologic pain management strategies that means you can't do this alone but they always help to relieve the patient's pain that is um, when you use them in combination with pharmacological pain medications like your uh, NSAIDs opioids and all so next thing is to immobilize the fractured limb you elevate it and position the patient comfortably because constant movement of that fractured limb if it continues to move all the time and you don't position the patient properly it may even cause more pain to the patient so next we have administer prescribed analgesic as others such as your opioids and NSAIDs that's your non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs because obviously they uh their mechanism of action is to block the pain pathway and reduce patient's sensation of pain if you've not watched the video where I explained pain medications, I'm going to link it um, to the screen and also in the description box below. So you can go and watch the video where I explained uh, or where I simplified the pharmacology of analgesics. Finally, you have to monitor pain levels frequently. So because you have given them the medications, you have used diversion therapy, you've done your first assessment and you've immobilized the limb, you know, you've positioned her properly, you've given her medications, doesn't mean you just leave her like that. You have to consistently come back to monitor the pain so that you can assess the effectiveness of the pain management strategies. So an example of what our evaluation will look like is this. Now, don't forget for exam purposes, if you don't write your evaluations in your nursing care plan, then your care plan is not complete. And for example, please, you must ensure that the evaluation you are writing is within the time frame that you have written in your objective. So in the objective, we wrote that the patient's level of pain will reduce within one to two hours of intervention. So as our evaluation, we're saying that after one hour of intervention, the patient verbalized reduction in pain perception. So probably Mrs. Zawako now said, my pain was on eight over 10 initially, but after all we have done, my pain is now five over 10 or six over 10. Like she would verbalize that the pain has reduced. So that is the first nursing diagnosis that we have worked on. Let's go to the second one. So the second nursing diagnosis we're working on is impaired physical mobility related to musculoskeletal pain and unfamiliarity with the use of immobilization devices evidenced by patients' inability to perform ADLS, that's activities of daily living. Our objective has to be realistic. Let's not forget fracture of the right femur is not something that is a joke and bone healing is something that takes a while. So your time frame has to be very, very realistic. So our objective here is that the patient will demonstrate safe mobilization techniques with the help of assistive devices within three days of nursing intervention. That means you'll be able to like say, okay, this is how to do things safely or this is how I can do things safely. She will understand it and she will begin to demonstrate it. I'm not saying she's going to be able to move around freely independently after three days. I'm saying she will start demonstrating safe mobilization techniques. So this is actually very, very realistic for a fracture patient. Now let's go over to the next part of the nursing care plan. So here are our nursing interventions and scientific rationale. The first thing is that we are going to collaborate with a physical therapy team to develop a mobilization plan. Obviously, physiotherapists are specialists when it comes to helping patients develop mobilization plan. So it is only proper that we obtain a referral and also collaborate with them as nurses. So the scientific rationale is that you want to create an evidence-based management plan with a multidisciplinary input. So the nurse gets to say something, physiotherapist gets to say something. You can even call the physicians and everybody together 
and they have their own input to the mobilization plan. The next thing is to educate the patient on proper use of assistive devices such as crutches or a walker depending on what was given to the patient or even a Zima frame. So, and this is because safe use of these assistive devices will enable early mobilization and decrease the risk of additional injury because there's one thing for the patient to be using it and it's another thing for the patient to be using it well. So if the patient is not using it well, it may even cause more harm to the patient. Next thing is to assist the patient with ambulation and transfers as needed to prevent falls and further injury. So if the patient is trying to move around on the ward, the nurse is supposed to assist them with moving around, like always be with them, guide them. You're not, I'm not saying you should carry, you have to carry them, but you just have to assist them. And the scientific rationale is that if they fall, it can cause more complications. Imagine falling on an already fractured limb. That is not nice at all. Then another thing to do is to ensure that the patient's environment is free of hazards to prevent falls, like water on the floor, things that could make the patient sleep, or just, you know, if they should be wearing the appropriate footwear on the leg that is not fractured so they don't slip and fall. And we already established a scientific rationale that we don't want for that falls that can cause complications finally you have to constantly monitor how well and often the patient uses these assistive devices because some of them can keep it beside them they won't use it you have to just monitor that they are using it so that it will promote independence and if they are not using it there might probably be an issue that they don't even want to talk about and it is it is your duty as a nurse to ensure that they are actually going with the management plan and that is because you also want to assess the effectiveness of the mobility management strategies that is a scientific rationale so next thing is to write out an evaluation bearing in mind that our evaluation always has to go in line with the time frame that you've written in your objectives for an exam purpose so here is our evaluation the patient demonstrated safe mobilization techniques with the help of assistive devices after two days of nursing intervention, meaning that after two days, Mrs. Owako demonstrated like movement. She started moving and started using the assistive devices after two days. Now let's go to the last or final example for this particular nursing care plan on fractures. So this is our final diagnosis, which is a risk diagnosis. Remember, a risk diagnosis is something that might happen that we are trying to prevent from happening. From our scenario, it was not stated that the patient has demonstrated any sign of infection. So, but the fact that there is a break in skin integrity, there is risk for infection. So, our objective for the, this diagnosis of risks for infection related to an over fracture and laceration is that the patient will remain free from signs of infection throughout the hospital stay. This is a long term diagnosis, like it's going to be throughout the patient's hospital stay. So let's um, go over to the nursing interventions and rationale for this diagnosis. So the first thing is to educate the patient on signs and symptoms of infection, such as increased redness on the area, swelling, drainage, and fever. So they are able to understand that when they start having these symptoms, they can easily tell the nurse that they are feeling it before the nurse even like makes an assessment. They can, you know, they can tell us in case we didn't catch it on time. That way we are working, we are giving them like a sense of involvement in their own care. And it is always nice when you allow patients to be involved in their plan of care. And also the scientific rationale is that early identification of infection signs would foster prompt management. Like when you identify the signs quite early, they will start the management early so that it doesn't become um, something complicated. The next thing is to perform wound care as per hospital protocol, including the cleaning and dressing changes and maintaining aseptic technique. That means you must always ensure that all the equipment you're using for wound dressing are properly sterilized and you use um, the normal wound dressing protocol. Dress like maybe what the number of swab you're supposed to use, how you're supposed to swipe, you know, from clean from in to out, all those protocols. And the scientific rationale is that proper wound dressing helps to prevent infection on the wound side. Another thing is to monitor the wound side for signs of infection at each dressing change. So each time the nurse is dressing that wound, you have to keep checking and assessing to ensure that it is not coming with signs of infection. Because the fact that you dressed it on the first to third day and there was no sign of infection doesn't mean on the fourth day there won't be signs of infection. And the scientific rationale is always similar, also similar to the first two on the fact that Early identification of infection signs would help you to quickly manage. 
then always administer prophylactic antibiotics and prescribe as prescribed sorry patients who have risk of coming down with infections are usually placed on prophylactic antibiotics just to prevent infections it's like you're trying to help the body build soldiers against infection or trying to like protect the body from the infection that might happen so these um, antibiotics are usually prescribed and it's the duty of the nurse to administer them now let's go over to the evaluation of this nursing diagnosis and just like i said for example purposes you always have to ensure that your evaluation is within the time frame that you put in your objective so our evaluation is that the patient had no sign of infection throughout the hospital stay and there you have it those are three um, examples of nursing diagnosis that you can work on for a patient with fracture if you want to see more of my videos where i talk about nursing care plan of other conditions click on this playlist here and i'll see you in the next video bye